If you are a video marketing nerd like I am, you want to capture as much information of how users are engaging with your video content. Yes, we have YouTube Studio, which offers a ton of great data, but we also have another free tool which gives an additional layer of information of how users are engaging with videos on your website. In Google Tag Manager, there is a video views trigger where you can capture some of this information and pass it on as events in your event reports within Google Analytics. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the steps of how you can set up the tag, the trigger, and the custom built-in variables that allow you to capture this information. So let's begin. Before we begin even setting up a tag or a trigger, the first thing that we want to do is click on variables. And then we want to configure our built-in variables. When you scroll down, just go ahead and check every single video variable. You're most likely not going to use every single variable for any single video tag that you create, but at least you'll have the option to select any one of these in the future. By selecting all the video built-in variables now, it's going to save you from having any headaches later on by having to keep coming back and selecting all the different options. Once the variables are selected, there's no need to save because you've already chosen them, so you can just X out. And now we can go and start creating our tag. And of course we want to name our tag. And when we configure the tag, we want to choose the Google Analytics Universal Analytics tag. The track type is going to be an event tag. I'm just going to go down really quick and add my Google Analytics variable to my tag. Now I'm going to go back up to the important part, which is the event tracking parameters. Here's why checking all of the video variables is really important, because it gives you the option to start recording whatever categories, actions, and labels you want to track within the event section within Google Analytics. So within my category, I typically like to choose the video title. So whatever the YouTube video title is, it's going to pull in as my category. For this particular example, as the action, I want to know to what percentage of the video did the user watch. And then under the label, maybe I want to see the video status, whether the user was playing it, whether it was paused, or possibly was the video buffering. You can make any of these categories, actions, or labels almost whatever you want. Maybe instead of the video status, you may want to see the page where the user was watching the video if you have a lot of different videos on a lot of different pages of your website. So take a look at all the variables that you have set up either by the default built-in ones within Tag Manager or any other custom ones that you may have created on your own. You will be able to implement that into this video tag to view whatever data that you want past within Google Analytics. But for now, I'm just going to stick to these categories, actions, and labels. Now when creating this video views tag, we will have to use the built-in video views trigger. I want to create a new one. We also have to name our trigger. I personally like to keep my trigger names as consistent with the tag names just so I know which one they're attributed to. And now let's configure the video trigger. The option is pretty straightforward. We want the user engagement YouTube video trigger. Now here is where the advertiser has the ability to capture whatever element they want that they can push in as a either category action label within Google Analytics. By default, your start and complete capture options will be selected, but I also might want to see when the user paused the video, and I definitely want to track the progress in this tag that I'm setting up. If you want to track the progress by percentage, you can break it out however you want to. I commonly like to do it by every 25%. You can see I did 25 comma, 50 comma, 75. If the user watches 100% of it, we don't have to add the 100 to our percentages because that'll automatically be applied within the trigger. If you have really short videos, you may want to change up that percentage to go by every 10%. Again, it all comes back to user preference and what information you want to see pass back into Google Analytics. If you don't want to do percentages and you rather choose time thresholds, keep in mind, and I'm going to highlight it right here, it is broken out within seconds. So any video marketer or video advertiser who is running video campaigns within Google Ads, we're used to this. Watch time within Google Ads is broken out by seconds. So the way that we can track these events in the video views is also going to be broken out by seconds. So Google actually has a pretty good example built in, or if you want to look at by every 10, 60, 120, most likely the length of your videos is going to dictate how you want to break out those time thresholds. Again, it's going to be completely up to you and most likely the video content that you want to promote or track. And then last, you want to choose when this trigger will fire. I always like to set up a first video views trigger for all video views on the website where my Google Tag Manager code is being applied. So this will capture any video on any page and it'll record whatever category action label that we have already defined within the tag itself. Now there could be certain situations where you only want to track some video views. For one example, I may only want to track video views on my About Us page. If this is how I choose to set up my trigger, no matter how many videos I may have on my website, we are only going to record video views on the About Us page within Google Analytics. Another possible option that is pretty common, if you have a ton of videos, you may only want to capture certain categories. So if you title your video anything specific, in our case in the Paid Media Pros channel, we have a good amount of videos about Facebook. 
we may only want to track video views within Google Analytics if the video title has the word Facebook in it. So again, look at the video content that you have on your website, how you might want to categorize it and record it and see that information. It's going to be completely different depending on your goals. But in this case, I just want to stick with all videos and then I'm going to click save. My video views tracking trigger is attached to my tag, so I can save my tag now too. And before I publish this tag live, I'm gonna to wanna to preview it. So when you select the preview mode in Google Tag Manager, you'll be able to actually see if the tag and trigger I set up is working on the live website. Now that I'm in preview mode, I can go to my website. So I have set up this video tag on my website and I can pull up this preview a little bit more so I can see the tags that are currently fired on this page and the ones that still haven't fired. And there's my YouTube views tracking tag, which hasn't fired yet because I haven't started to watch a video. So let's give it a shot. You can see once I started to play the video, we have the YouTube views tracking is firing. Now this is a pretty long video. So as we get to the point of, I moved it a little bit further past the 25% mark, as we can see another part of the tag fired. So looking at that 25, 50, 75, 100% that I'm tracking, I now gone from zero, which would be part of the element that would be tracked. And then also now I pass that 25 element. If I move it a little bit further, it fired three times. Now we're past that 50%. Past that 75%, we can see up to fired four times. And then once the video is complete, we'll be able to track the full video view completion within the event part within Google Analytics. So if everything looks good, we can go back into Tag Manager and then we could submit our changes. Now that our tag is published, we can now go back into Google Analytics and see what this data would look like. Okay, I've now opened up my Google Analytics and just to save some time, I've already gone to the behavior section on the left-hand side and then down to the events report and I'm already on the overview. So remember when we set up the actual tag itself, we made the event category the video title and that's exactly what we're seeing right now recorded within Google Analytics. And we can also, within this main overview, look at the event actions and labels, but I wanna see how it looks comparing some of this data together. So I'm just gonna click this first one. And again, we can see the title of the core video as the event category. Now I can add a secondary dimension to look at some of the other elements. And remember when setting up the tag, I had the video status set at the event action, and we can see that information broken out just for this specific video title. Since we can't add multiple dimensions at once, I have to change my secondary dimension. And now we can see the event label, which was the video progress. Now this view might be a little confusing to you compared to what I said earlier in the video. You might be thinking, wait a minute, when you set up the trigger, you set it to fire at 25, 50, 75%, and we're seeing a ton of other numbers here, and that's a good question. Remember, the trigger is when the video fires, not necessarily the information that we're recording. The progress of the YouTube video is going to be tracked when a user passes the chosen percentage milestones you set up in your trigger. Google also states on their help and support page that percentage and time thresholds will only fire the trigger the first time they are reached. So if a user goes or you're landing a user further in the video and they're not watching from the beginning and they're past a particular percentage or time threshold in the video, the event won't fire. So let's say for whatever reason, your video on your website is starting users at around the 66% mark and we have the same percentage thresholds of 25, 50, 75%. The trigger is not gonna fire and record that first time element until the user hits that 75 percentage point. So also remember what I did previously in the video when I was showing you when I was in preview mode and I was testing out how the trigger works, I was jumping around the video a little bit so I can see if it was recording a few different times. Those are the event labels that are being recorded. Once I've passed certain elements, that's how we can get weird numbers like 39, 40, 46, 66, not the exact percentages because I'm not watching it straight from the beginning all the way through. And remember, you can see a variety of information within Google Analytics. This is just one example that was based on the tag I set up earlier in the demo. I'm only recording one type of category, action, and label. Look at those variables. Look at the custom information that you could pull in and you could see a variety of different data within your Google Analytics depending on what information you want to look at. The best part about this video trigger is that you can record any views or any video actions that are embedded on your website and that doesn't have to be your own videos. So from a content marketing perspective, it could be really valuable if you're using other people's videos on your website or your landing pages, you're recording those interactions and you're tracking within Google Analytics what type of content your current users like to engage with. Then use that information to come up with better videos that you can use on your own channels. You can come up with better video ads because you know what type of videos your current users already like to engage with. So give it a shot. It's pretty easy to set up, just three easy steps within Google Tag Manager and soon you can start recording all those video interactions within Google Analytics. Thanks for watching our video. Make sure to subscribe to the Paid Media Pros channel to see more videos. 